so I made a similar talk on this very topic on last year's LibreOffice conference in Denmark. Um, I got some positive feedback from, from guys that were just starting with the UI hacking, telling me, yes, this is, this is exactly what the newcomers need to get introduced to the UI hacking in LibreOffice. Um, one of the issues UI hacking is kind of pestered with is like acute lack of documentation. In many cases, the only documentation is an old open office wiki. And if you are not really a fan of abstract computer science, paper language, this documentation will be very hard to read for you. And in the meantime, some new UI hackers appeared and also some I, I mentored two uh, GSOC projects focused on UI hacking. And, and I realized, well, the so situation with documentation didn't op improve at all. And perhaps I could make one more tutorial, one more talk on this very topic. And to begin with, let me quote some, or let me first explain why, why is this talk called the revenge of SFX2 API. Uh, and let me quote some wise men in the process. <laughs> uh, yes, so uh, SFX2 API, um, the dispatch API is basically the driving force behind everything what happens in, in the LibreOffice user interface. Fortunately, we will, we will not look how it, how it, what, what's inside because it's really scary Perhaps you don't want to know, but we will at least see how it, how it looks from the outside. And well, how, so, uh, and in the, so uh, is there anyone who ever wrote a LibreOffice user interface code? Some hands raising. So I have a plea for, for all of you. Uh, please don't copy paste the code. <laughs> and the reason why, why you should not copy paste the code is that like this is, this is maybe it's not specific to, to user interface hackers, but that's what the, the, the people who somehow start with UI hacking frequently do, that they take the code that, that works somewhere else and they, they use control C and control V and copy paste this code to, to a different place. And in some cases it behaves okay, it's, it works well, but then it fails in like very, very subtle ways, very strange ways, and those ways are kind of, um, and it makes it somehow, somehow hard to debug, and then the people say, oh, whoa, 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 but this code works somewhere else, why doesn't it work here? So this is something also we will we'll look at, some, some common bugs or some, some problems we can encounter when when hacking on the UI and how to fix them. So uh, let's start with some, some recap of, of you, um, you know commands. You know commands are some kind, some kind of like basic building block of uh, the user interface. So there's this behind every toolbar button, there's some you know command. Um, as you can see, um, this is, this is some kind of uh, sample snippet of XML. It's a configuration of toolbar, and if it references those, those uh, dot you know, colon something, those are the you know commands. Also uh, behind every, almost every sidebar button or, or sidebar control, as you can see, you can all again see some, some snippet of sidebar configuration of the UI file. There is some you know command behind them. And all those commands are, are stored in, in a central place, which is in Office config folder. There are two kinds of them. There are generic commands that are shared by all applications, and then all the other applications like Writer, Calc, Impress, they have their specific set of commands that are used and only in this application and nowhere else. And to make it a bit more visual, here is some, some snippet of, of XML config of a menu bar containing, containing a you know command. And then on the left, well, it's my left, it's your right. 
on the right you can see you can see how it how it maps to to a particular command in the central storage of the you know commands and as you might also know as well all the you know commands have hotkeys this is an example like in calc if you press f1 f9 uh, it will execute this very you know command that is highlighted in red and um, the funny trick about those commands that that they're localizable so if the particular particular shortcut doesn't fit your language fit your keyboard layout there's a possibility to change it so that's one end of pipe there are toolbars there's a sidebar there are menus there's some user interaction with those elements and that's that's one end of the pipe and um, on the other end of the pipe there are some C++ functions, some methods that actually carry out the work that, I don't know, format the page, uh, change the fill of the shape, or, I don't know, uh, insert, insert some data somewhere. And what's in between? It's slots. Slots somehow connect those user interface elements with, with those functions, you can, I, I put some, some, some funny image of an Enigma blackboard, so you can Im imagine it as some, some kind of uh, blackboard with, with user interface on one end and the C++ function or like the usual, um, the, the code doing the, the heavy lifting, like actually executing the work. And those slots if live in those, those funny SDI files, so if you ever found SDI file, in the open uh, in the LibreOffice code base, this is where the slots live. This is where they are. And for every you know command, there is a slot. It's it's a bit hidden, so the command has this you know prefix, but the slot doesn't. And here is some some clever trick. If you're looking, if you have a you know command and you want to find the slot for this particular you know command you can you can use this you can then download my slides and copy paste this command line <laughs> copy paste this command line and you will it, it will take you to the slot that's responsible for this command so what are those SDI files there are two types of SDI files and one of them contains uh, slot definitions so that some description of on of how this particular slot behaves and the other type of SDI files is some kind of interface, how, how slots are organized into some list or arrays, how those are organized into shells, and how those shells somehow connect to, to, the, to the actual C++ classes and functions. And those SDI files by, are processed by something that's, that's called SVIDL that crunches those files and then creates some... Um, how to say that, some, some huge arrays of pointers to C++ functions. Uh, those live in work directory, work there. And yeah, if, if you're brave, you can, you can have a look at those, those um, files that are kind of, I don't know, very little human readable. So this is how an average slot definition looks like. Uh, as I say, like all those, those entries, like describe or, or define how, how does the slot behave, if it can be assigned keyboard shortcut, for example, if it can be used in menu entry, if it can be used in toolbox. And um, some clever tricks I can show. So if you, if you ever wondered how, if you, if you have a slot and if you have a toolbar button, and you want to make a toolbar button some kind of binary toggle, this is how you do it set this toggle attribute to true or if you have a toolbar if, if you have a slot and you want to ex, uh, expose it in the toolbar button make it accessible allow to make it to, to be a part of a toolbar this is how it is done again this toolbox config can be set to true and this SFX, uh, SVX page item highlighted um, oh I used to um, in my previous job I used to do some network programming so I like to imagine those those SFX SVX items as some kind of network packets some data that travel like from the user type of data that travel in small packets from from the user interface to the to the C++ code 
Um, those data can, can be of, of, of different type. It can be a color, it can be font, it can be, I don't know, cell border. And this particular example, this is a slot that's responsible for, um, for uh, setting the attributes of the page. And the packet's the item that travels to the slot, some kind of main communication unit, contains the attributes of the page. If it's a landscape or portrait, which layout, which numbering, and, and so on. So this is, this is what those items are for. And as I mentioned, there are some two, two types of those SDI files. This was one of them with the slot definitions. And on the right, we can see the other, the other SDI file, which defines slot interfaces or shell interfaces. So um, every, every slot which is defined in, in one SDI file is then part of some interface. And then interface are organized into shells. So, what's the shell? If we simplify that, it's some set of different functions for different objects or different contexts. And here we can see some example of, of, of calc spreadsheet. There's a pivot table, there are normal cells, there's a graph, a chart. And all of those like different types of objects are in fact different shells. So we can, have a, we can have a cell shell and some set of operations that are possible for a cell. So we can format cell, we can, we can delete its content, we can insert some image. And then yet another set of operations that are available for a pivot table, like edit its layout or insert subtotals. And yet another set of operations that is available for chart. So those are somehow grouped in the ch ch um, chart shell. So we can, we can format the data series or insert labels or, or I don't know, format axis. And there's those arrays like of functions or groups of functions available in a particular shell are grouped in, in big arrays like this. And it's, it's, the, it's the interface entry and then interface are then, then parts of the shell. So every shell can contain multiple interfaces. Um, now we finally get to the, to the meat. So how, um, where's actually the code carrying out the, the UI work? Like the, uh, where's, where's the C++ code? Where's the C++ class and method executing something, doing something when I click on a toolbar button or where, when I do something in UI? So uh, this is a, as I said, this is, this is the interface that's organized, um, that's put in the shell. And this doc shell is the name of the class. So if you're looking for a C++ code, implementing a particular UI function, look for this class. And if you are looking for a particular method implementing the function, this is the method to find. And as you can see, there are two types of methods. One is the execute method, and the other is the state method. What's the difference between them? I will show an example. So execute method is what, what happens when you, well, what's actually executed. So if I, if I click on this um, funny area formatting button, an execute method will get called, and the color of the object, object changes. But now, the toolbar buttons should somehow, it would be nice if it would reflect the change I've just made. And that's for the state method is for. So the state method carry, queries the state of the object and updates the toolbar button back. And this is, this is where some, um, let's say, common errors or common problems happen so I've listed a couple of them on the next slide, which we, which we encountered in, in the development uh, during GSOC and implementing some UI features. So <laughs> if you ever wondered why, why a toolbar or sidebar control uh, doesn't pick up the, the state, like something has changed in the, in the spreadsheet or something has changed in the drawing and, and the sidebar button doesn't update, uh, by the method I outlined on the previous slides, 
try to locate the get state method for this particular slot and see what's happening there, put the breakpoint. Another issue is we, we once had, uh, we correctly updated the, the slot uh, definition and we exposed the toolbar, um, the slot, in for, we made it available for the toolbar, but it stayed disabled, like no matter what, what, what was done, it was always grayed out. Uh, so a part of this SFX API is, is disabling the slot. So if you disable the slot, it means that the menu entry is grayed out or, or the, the toolbar button is grayed out, it's not accessible. So what, what you can try to do is to, to grab for the slot, slot, locate the slot and find some code, try to find some code that is disabling it and like find out why, why is that happening. And I think by that I, I came to the, to the end of my talk. <laughs>